friend is at Survivor.com. It's me, Mario. <laughs> you guys, number one. Yeah, it's the Friendly Fire Show, episode 175. It's the first of our three-part E3 2021 series. Today, we're going to be looking at Ubisoft, Devolver, Summer Game Fest, and EA slash just Battlefield. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Steve from Survivor. I'm Ben from Survivor. And I'm Hamish, also from Survivor. There's a lot we of... We probably uh, don't need the from Survivor, Steve, when we have... That's all we have. <laughs> well, when we are Survivor. All Survivor, <laughs> yeah. all white all males we're hitting every <laughs> demographic so well guys well done us um was i the only person to get up early this morning i think i was from the sound of it mm. yeah i think this is the first time i haven't watched any of them live so far since like 2010 or something probably even earlier like i've either been there or i've got up early but uh ubisoft and devolver weren't quite doing it for me for today at least well, there you go. I know Hamish was working last night on a video for this morning, so I doubt you woke up early. Is that accurate? Uh, I pretty much went to bed when the conferences started. So, oh, wow. <laughs> that was probably a, a wise decision, to be honest. Um, but we are going to start with Hamish because we're going to start with Ubisoft. Uh, and I, and unless something drastic happens in the next couple of days, Hamish, you have the distinction of being the only survivor staffer to do a hands-on with a game at E3 this year. So one, congratulations. How does it feel? Oh, so exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and that game, of course, is uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly Parasite, formerly Quarantine, which has had its name changed for probably very obvious reasons. Did they talk about that a bunch? Not really. It was kind of like vaguely touched on, but I think they want to try and avoid any kind of like, hey, we've made a game about a pandemic that's like wrecking the United States as much as possible. So <laughs> They've already done that with The Division, I suppose. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did I make up that it was on a space station? Did I, like, I thought it was on a space station and I don't so, know why. I think there was like early stuff that was like shown on a space station or talked about but i think that's mostly because like in the original outbreak event in operation chimera way back in like 2018 in rainbow it's supposed six to siege. be like in rainbow six siege um it's supposed to be like a satellite or something that crashes but they think it's a meteor and so i think that's kind of where that that whole thing went but yeah it's all as far as we've seen so far like we might end up in space because you know why not but they didn't show us that. So, <laughs> so it's it's not a it's not a space station sci-fi alien isolation game. You said it's not a, a Left for Dead game. You can talk about that some more. But then, I guess, what is it first? Yeah. So I, th I think like the best kind of uh, parallel you can draw is maybe like Splinter Cell or Metal Gear Solid kind of thing, purely because it's very stealthy. Like you want to be quiet as much as possible because. If you do get a lot of these guys on you at once, these like alien zombie things, because they're, they're like an alien virus, but they're also like zombified people who've died to it. Um, if they get on you, you're in trouble, like two to three hits tops and they'll like, they'll drop you. And that's at the base level too. That's not even the harder ones that you fight further on down the track. So it's like, yeah, they've kind of, kind of, I, I guess, gone in on that uh tactical like element instead of just the like left for dead horde mode kind of thing which is good because we're seeing a lot of those other games coming through at e3 now but we'll touch on that later but it's like i i think the direction they've gone in is gonna make them distinct i hope uh and it kind of stays true to that tom clancy rainbow six vibe so have you played gtfo before or seen it i've seen it um i'm getting kind of those vibes or is that do you know if that's accurate or not? Not really. Even then, that's too like four versus horde, which is definitely not what, um, definitely not what quarant uh, quarantine, definitely not what extraction. <laughs> that's going to take a while to get out of the system. Uh, it's definitely not what extraction seems to be about. It seems to be like you occasionally will fight big hordes. Like you have the classic destiny thing where you stand and defend a point for like, you know, two or three minutes. And that's the whole gameplay loop for that level um and then you'll get a lot coming at you but you're probably fighting like 20 to 30 as opposed to like something like world war z 
which had like 300 to 400 per horde event. So yeah, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's a more, like I said, more Rainbow Six style tactical game, less of that like uh, GTFO or um, Space Hulk, Left 4 Dead, all those kind of games. So, but like, it looks, it looks good. Uh, the gameplay is exactly the same as Siege. Like if you take a gun in Siege and then you go into uh, Extraction, got it right that time, um, it feels exactly the same. Like you put a silencer in a gun and it shoots like shit. You put like other stuff on the gun and it's, it's manageable. So it's, yeah, it's going to be good, I think, for Siege fans especially. So That's a good point. Ben, are you a Siege fan or a player? Or are they going to end up kind of side by side? No. Yeah, I can I can see it like uh, a bit of an onboarding. I played it. I've appreciated it. Yeah. Well, uh, I watched like the finals or something in like 2018 at like in the Paris, whatever that's called. I had no idea about this game. I enjoyed what I watched. There's no way I could do any of that. Super hardcore high level. So I probably shouldn't jump in there. I should probably go down with some more pleb level players. Uh but see, I always thought Rainbow Six was more tactical, real, yeah, like you, Steve, exactly. Uh, was that kind of like, it's the real SAS is based on that. And then this, it seems like, have they had this kind of alien level vibe before? Or is that what the distinction is in Extraction compared to Siege? Well, they, so they've kind of done, what they do is they do limited time events uh, in Siege where they just try out like little different gameplay things. Um, there was like a Wild West one where you only had like single shot guns um there was like a bunch of other ones as well and outbreak was in from what i remember to be the the real first of them and it was thematic because they were introducing two operators that were basically like counter viral guys like they would go in where there was like Mm. biological threats and they would deal with it um so it was all thematic and that was kind of like the start of their return to that player versus environment thing um but as you said, like siege gameplay normally is completely different. Like you're going against sweat lords and salty boys on um, yeah. like a tactical mill sim type shooter. Um, but I think they've kind of moved away from that across like the six or so years that siege has been a thing. Um, the gadgets are getting more far, far out. Like it used to just be a dude with a sledgehammer who was like jacked. Uh, and now it's like people with, you know, all sorts of funky drones and healing bots and stuff. So I think they've kind of straight away from that already in like the main game um and i think this is going to move like lockstep kind of like you said before where it's like you know it's kind of advancing the pve side of the game a bit more but i tell you what this is like a this is going to be something that i think will sink it is if it's a full price game i think that's going to be a really hard sell uh it is pretty much i've seen it on jb for 79 australian there's a deluxe edition which cheap these days that is cheap there's a deluxe edition which is on the ubi store right now but i only found uh american pricing that was 80 bucks for the the deluxe edition with you get like like you get skins and weapon skins and um and charms and gear (laughs) but with the deluxe edition you also get 10 percent off like the in-game store which is I guess it's all cosmetic, so it's not like you're buying. It's not like pay to win or anything like that. But that seems a bit strange. Um, and Ubisoft has said that, like, if you own Siege and not quarantine, not extraction, extraction, extraction. God, um, you'll get like you automatically get like all the operators unlocked straight away, and this and that and the other. So yeah, like it's I don't know. It's it seems like I lo- I like what I've seen of people playing Siege. I'm awful at Siege. I therefore am not as excited as I used to be for extraction when I thought it was still like parasite and like very like spacey themed and it was something else in my mind. Um, but whatever, not everything has to be for me. <laughs> Most things should be, but not everything has to be for me. Anybody else want to say anything else about extraction before we continue on or no? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think so that like, I know about it. <laughs> I think that for yeah. you actually, like, I don't want to sound like a sage fanboy here. Cause I'm definitely not like, it's got, plenty of problems i think that like extraction is going to be a really good like pathway in to siege and if okay. they can get that like price point right and i mean okay 70 bucks sounds like a lot but if new games are 120 130 dollars these days anyway it's like unfortunately not that much um <laughs> the gun plays the same the operators are basically the same so it's going to be a good path in but again it's a really hard sell for people who have already played like a ton of siege because you know what's different 
is there enough? I, I think you kind of did a good job explaining it when you talked, like like you and I do when we talk generally, we just relate everything back to destiny. Like that <laughs> siege is the PvP, like the crucible of it. And extraction is the PvE, you know, lazy Sunday with a mate kind of thing. Is I don't know. So maybe maybe I will be interested in it. Who knows? I'm done talking about that though. Uh, what I would like to talk about is Rocksmith Plus. Much like Disney mm. Plus, I guess um, it's it's the newest subscription based service to come from Ubisoft. Uh, on the yearly basis, it's one hundred and forty nine dollars ninety five cents, and it's basically like a cool guitar trainer where you can connect your actual guitar to a PC or a console and learn accordingly. It's too expensive, is basically where I want to start this conversation. Yeah. So do you have to subscribe or can you not get the, can you get like a, just a base game? You have to subscribe. It's a subscription service. It's not, it's like an app. Basically it's not a Ugh. game. Okay. That's three times too much than what it should have been. So the first two Rocksmith games were good. Like the first one was a proof of concept and the second one kind of fixed all the problems it had and was much better and actually useful to the extent that I could play a couple of songs when it first came out through it. And like, it taught me how to do it. I couldn't play them for you now. I have to start again. But like I could see how if you committed to it, you would actually learn and it would help you. But you didn't have to buy it. You didn't have to describe. You could buy each song separately as you wanted them. Uh, I'm glad they followed it up because having a game called Rocksmith 2014 in 2021 is like the main edition was ridiculous. Terrible name. They didn't think that through at all. It makes sense to be a subscription, but like like 20 bucks a year or something, not like 150. Yeah. It's crazy. It's admittedly cheaper than guitar lessons, but also it's not mm. guitar lessons, is it? I don't know. Like, well, it kind of is, right? Like, I mean, that was going to yeah. be my only counterpoint. I think that that much money a year is ridiculous. Like, twenty five bucks a month, I think it was at base. Um, but I mean, a guitar lesson is like eighty bucks a lesson, right? And you're doing like two of those a month, maybe. But I don't know. Maybe would they miss their yeah. boat. You also have to have a guitar. <laughs> So like, yeah, that's true. It's so I guess if you have a guitar and you don't like your your current instructor or you haven't been able to see them because of you know Rainbow Six quarantine, um, you could get Rocksmith Plus and maybe you are saving money in that. But that's a very like niche group of people to me. But that's whatever. It's a specialized market, but at least I've changed it so that you can use your phone, so you don't need to get the cable. Uh, more accessible that way having said that i'd prefer to continue to use the cable because then you can just use headphones you can hear exactly what the game's telling you and what you're playing i don't want to have to have like an electric guitar and an amp and my phone and my tv speakers on like that's very loud for anyone else in your house so i i don't know i didn't actually hear if they, you could do both options or if you had to use the phone speaker thing could i tell you i think the phone speaker thing was just for acoustic stuff right so no, I said you could playing. use electric guitar and an amp as well. So maybe then you can also use the the, uh, the cable. Because, yeah, like you don't really want to have your amp on. You need your TV speakers on so that you can hear the trainer tell you, like, slow down or whatever. Like, that's getting loud. You need headphones mm -hmm. to play this game from my past experience. And I guess the other element then is you, if you were already an expert guitarist, you could treat this kind of like Guitar Hero, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, basically. They had training for that too, like using tabs, kind of showing this is more like what you would expect to see. Uh, but yeah, that was their sell. When I saw it at like E3 2012 or 13, like the very first one, and they were kind of like Guitar Hero. You kind of like you have to put in hours of work to get good at Guitar Hero and Expert, and you don't really get a skill besides Guitar Hero. So if you put that same time in, you could learn how to play guitar. That was their pitch, uh, but it wasn't really like playing Guitar Hero. There was it wasn't fun in the same way. So a clear difference. There you go. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to continue on. And I have a hands-off opportunity to talk about, which is Riders Republic, which I called uh, Fortnite plus Forza Horizon plus Extreme Sports. And, like, it's definitely not for me. It's, it's Fortnite-looking, but still manages to look realistic. But it's kind of like the Forza Horizon open world of you're, like, plunked into this condensed map that's supposed to represent, like, five or six different national parks in America. And then you mountain bike or you paraglide or something, extreme sports. Um, and mm. like, I guess it's good. And then like, you, you know, like you can go to events 
or you can mountain bike to an event and then mountain bike to another event, kind of like horizon style. And there's like the Forza Thon, you know, like mass event every hour in a different location on the map, or you can go to the right, uh, not the Riders Republic, the Riders something. God, that's horrible. The hub area, which is like the multiplayer social space where you can do different multiplayer games. Or you can just chill out with your friends. Um, and then when you get to like the multiplayer of it all, it's there's one mode that's like Tony Hawk's basically. So like you go in your group of four or three or something. God, it's been a long day. And you do tricks in the map. And, you know, if you do a trick on this section of the map, it turns your team's color. And the idea is to paint the map your color to win. Um, so it kind of just takes cherry picks from different things to make this kind of like extreme sport thing. It's by the people who did steep and, you know, they got a little bit angry with me when I was trying to, you know, like say it's like steep evolved to different sports and stuff. They were like, no, 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 it's completely different. Um, but that's, are you sure? Me. Cause what you've just described is steep as I remember it exactly. Even like the do it with your friends. Isn't that how you're meant to play steep? Like, yeah, sounds like this doesn't thing. have snow. And, and mountain bikes okay so it's different um, steep in the style of Fortnite. yeah like it's not for me but i'm sure that there are people who looked at that and went oh that's amazing like i i can go and do a virtual thing of the red bull rampage says a fan of red bull rampage i guess any thoughts from you guys <laughs> no i mean that's it like it looks like steep to me i don't know anything about it besides that besides what i saw today i didn't really pay any attention to this wasn't this game it's come out like months ago or is that something else yeah no it was um it like far cry was announced a while ago and they were both delayed um so i'm excited about far cry but we'll get there in a minute yeah i mean mm. for me it just looks so, like steep like it's steep with mountain bikes um and the fact that they like get angsty at you for saying <laughs> that it's not that no, nah, it's ridiculous. Um, but hey, it looks nice. It's pretty. Um, it reminds me a lot of Dirt. Uh, I think it was Dirt 5. It's that really like pop arty, Fortnite-y, as you said. But I mean, I'm sure that there's a market for it. It's just not us. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, it comes out in September now, um, which is lovely. Something that's already out. So they did. I think I'm doing these in order pretty much in terms of announcements. Um, they talked about Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, with crossplay and cross progression, um, two I guess major milestones in 2021. That would be this year. Uh, crossplay and cross progression comes to Windows PC, uh, Amazon Luna, and Google Stadia. And then in 2022, those platforms are joined by Xbox and PlayStation. And by 2022, like everybody's in one big crossplay cross progression land and hamish you you're not a, a huge fan of siege as you said but you are definitely the go-to in this group for siege that's it. like what are you going to say about cross and cross cool that's awesome or no i hate that how dare they uh i mean i think it's probably a bad thing for console players but it might speak to the actual population that they have at the moment playing the game across all those different kind of platforms and i guess with the split between last gen and current gen like maybe that's causing like player base issues for them across both but um i mean so on on siege on console at least there's a really big problem with people plugging in a keyboard and mouse and then just clapping everyone on controller because like controller is so hard to play with siege like you're leaning and stuff it just doesn't work very well um so i mean maybe it'll just like even everybody out a bit but it's good more cross play is good correct and it is on, it's on Game Pass. So like Ben and I, for all of our whinging about, we don't play it and we, you know, ooh, we should try, I guess like we actually could try Ben. And now we played before, like when it first came out, we played and we, yeah, we were good for like two days. Stomped. And then were we ever good? No, we were good when it was journos only because yes, yes. Because the Australian game journos were not good. They were worse than us. At least oh, I was true. good. That's and true. then it got released and actual people played it and I was terrible. So the level I can play at is other games journalists I will destroy. Not all of them, but some on console. Uh, so very small market. There's like six people I can play against. Don't even have two full teams. And then when it really gets released, terrible. Well, when crossplay comes out, we can get Hamish and his friends on his Discord server to join us. We'll plug in a keyboard and mouse into our console. Oh, and okay. then we'll switch back to a, a, a controller because we don't know how to use a keyboard and mouse. And we'll still clap people in. Words. Exactly. In young people's speak. And I are the same okay. age. 
Well, I, I feel like I'm 50 million years old, uh, except for when Just Dance comes out as part of the Ubisoft Forward presentation. And I feel like a child again, because I love it. I don't care. It should have led the show as it always does. Uh, Todger Call confirmed that the game was coming out in case you didn't know. Uh, it's the second year, I think, that it's not out on a, on a Wii, which is shocking because wow. that was like one of the, the mainstays like of the original Wii, not just Wii U. But anyway. Uh, I don't think we have to speak anymore about Just Dance unless any of you have. No, I do have one question. How does this, how does this play? This So, like, obviously, Switch uses Joy-Con. How do you play this now that Connect is dead and you, whatever? PlayStation has the camera, I guess. Oh, yeah. I guess you could still use PlayStation camera, but for the most part, it's like an app on your phone and you just hold it in your hand. So, like, you could you could literally just do this to dance if you really wanted okay. to. But, you know, like, where's the, the old, fun in that? Mm. Then? Where's the flair? Exactly. <laughs> That's Isn't it. there a RuPaul song in there now too? I saw. It's not quite a RuPaul song, oh. but it's um, Todd Call, who is a cho- choreographer who works with a lot of drag queens, and is on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, his song's called "Hair, Legs, Hips." Nope, that's not it. It's some. It's <laughs> he's rewriting that song to be probably more like child friendly instead AJ. of like hunty. Um, but that was with an H, by the way. Uh, and they're filming a new music video to go along with it. So nice and wholesome, which is fine. That's that. Uh, ben, you're basically the Valhalla expert, I've decided. So uh, they announced two things for that game. The Siege of Paris expansion, mm. which comes out our winter time, and then Discovery Tour Viking some such title. I'm good at this, uh, which comes out following that. Uh, one is free, one is paid, the expansion's paid. Take it away. What do you think? And they announced the third thing, which is this is, I think, the first Assassin's Creed game that's going to get support in a second year because presumably there is no new Assassin's Creed this year, which is excellent news. As we've discussed, the best recent Assassin's Creed, Origin and Valhalla, both had a year off before it. So by the time it comes out, you're not totally over Assassin's Creed. It feels kind of new. A year off is a lot for Assassin's Creed. Uh, Good news. I suppose them bringing more expansions. So we've already had one, the one which was delayed and just came out. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. Uh, we uh, The Siege of Paris is basically that exactly. It's just reliving the historical Siege of Paris with the fictional um, Assassin's Creed kind of lens over it. What they do next year, I'm not sure. Like how many expansions do we need? I don't know about you guys, but often by the time the Assassin's Creed expansions come out, I finish the game. I just can't be bothered going back because it's like you're level 50. You need to remember what you're doing. Where do you go? And I just, it's so much on the map that I can't be bothered getting into it. So I've struggled to get it. As much as Valhalla is great, I struggle to get excited for there's more expansions coming next year because I just, I don't think I can be bothered doing that. Hamish, is that like, is optimistic? Yay, they're supporting this game and not making you buy another like full priced Assassin's Creed game? Or is it, this is like kind of a subtle way of making this like a game as a service and they want me to just like stay with this game until the end of time or is there a middle somewhere maybe it's a middle somewhere um i mean good it's good of them to have more of that like after support but as ben said like uh an example of that for me is like dark souls 3 the last expansion came out like a year and a half or something or a year after it finished and i'd played through the first expansion and like the game and I just could not be bothered going back and learning how to play again for starters because that's always a big thing in games like mm, even it. Valhalla where it's like combos and stuff it's like you have to remember what to do um but yeah I mean I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since like <laughs> oh man oh, what was your last Black one? Flag. I think Black Flag was oh. the last one I played oh that was goody skip I Origins have, I was at Origins and I think I have Odyssey as well but I just haven't played them Skip Origins, go straight to Odyssey. And this is kind of going back to what Ben was saying. I love an Assassin's Creed game, but it's always it always comes out in a weird time. And I usually play like five minutes of it and then I have to set it aside and then eventually go back to it. And I didn't get back to Odyssey until all of the DLC was out. And I like I saw my husband playing it for a bit and I just fell back into it like hard. And I went from like five minutes of playtime. I think when I finished, it was like 95 hours and I burned through everything. And I like that's it's encouraging if you're someone who didn't get to Valhalla and you come back and like you have this complete package because you might not want to do some of the weird side quests, even though they're pretty good. There's so much of that Ubisoft just like map bloat of like there's 15 million points to wherever you're standing. 
But if you have like all of the expansions and all of the game, you can kind of skip some of the, the superfluous stuff and just do like the good story based thing. And that will take you for a while. But yeah, like if you, like you were saying, Ben, if you have skipped out for a while, having to get your brain back there is difficult. So my question then is like, what's the point of playing the game when it comes out? Why don't you just wait until all the like DLCs are released and just plow through it all then when it's cheaper and you have everything to play and there's no big break in the middle, right? So I think that's a virtue that comes to people who are patient. <laughs> yeah, it's not me either. <laughs> ben, are, are you going to just like skip all of Valhalla's DLC until one final push at um, the end? No, I think I'm done with the game. I've already lost. Like, I tried to play the most recent one. When you were here, I tried to play it briefly and I, I couldn't remember. Like, I played it hardcore for two or three weeks, finished it, and that's it. Like, I don't remember where I'm going. I don't remember any of my abilities or what I was trying to do. So, yeah, I find it too hard. The Discovery Tour is always really cool, though. That's not really a game at all. It's just a history lesson. So uh, I might check that out because that's always interesting. It's a fun, easy way to check it out. And I think, like, they even use that in schools and stuff. Like, it's, yeah. it's actually pretty good. And it's it's free, regardless, I think, of whether you own the, the base Valhalla game or not. And it's, like, you don't have to learn how to do anything. You just walk. <laughs> so that's good. That's you, don't, you don't have to be familiar with what's going on. Um, anything else? on that cool the next thing that they covered was far cry 6 they did like a big deep dive into it a couple weeks ago i did a preview i think at the end of may um but we got a look at like another scene with uh giancarlo esposito as anton castillo um and he's just a jerk like i don't know if we want to talk about that at all there's probably a bigger piece of news do do we want to talk about anton first any any thoughts on his extreme heel turn in case you didn't realize he was a jerk he was a jerk. Um, you can watch the video. Oh, no, I didn't realize did. anything different. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. he's the bad guy, I assumed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he, uh, he, he kills people because he's the dictator of Yara. Um, the, the big news, I guess, is that as part of the season pass, there's this new game mode where you can play as uh, Voss from Far Cry 3 or Pagan Min for Far Cry 4 or Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5 um, in some sort of mode where you're the villain and if you die everything kind of resets so i guess it's like a like a procedural rogue like kind of thing maybe i don't know what do you guys take from it mm, pass on that mode for me it doesn't look very good at all uh, it's it seems like that there's always been the experimental or the side far cry there was blood dragon which apparently is also part of the season pass somehow or for some pointless reason uh there was new dawn like there's always this oh we've got a bit extra far cry it's the idea we didn't really fully flesh out. Here it is later. They just chuck it in the season pass. It might be interesting, but I don't know. It didn't do anything for me at all. I mean, I think it's interesting. Um, I, I think it's good to see them playing with that formula a bit because to me, Far Cry has got a bit stale. Um, I think I played five. Is that the one with Joseph C? Yeah, that was the yeah. cult so, one yeah. in America. I played that one um, and it was too much. You know, there's too much going on in Far Cry games now. It's like they're just constantly going at you. You can't drive 100 meters without getting attacked by someone. Um, so I think having like experimental modes might push them in a better direction. But I think also relying on like old villains, like Vass is like a big thing, right? He's a meme now. So he's like a like a massively successful piece of Far Cry content, but... I think that's, that's kind thinks. of the problem. I think since Voss was so iconic, like Far Cry has basically just been trying to chase mm. that with each iteration. And like, I think if if you want to do that, you get Giancarlo Esposito to come and be your bad guy. Like, I think, I think, I think they're onto something here. But also, like, do you, do you need that reminder of the villains when you're trying to put him front and center? I don't know. Like, I like Voss. I thought Pagan Min was a bit on the nose for for some stereotypical reasons that they anyway and like i liked joseph seed but it was weird and then i didn't play what was the spin-off from that new dawn new dawn didn't play it just because it's a lot of far cry and it's not a number I'm, I'm i'm excited for this but i'm also yeah like i don't know if i'd care about it as much as the main game which looks really cool and like i like exploration and holstering your weapon and exploring that like that is something new to far cry which i'm kind of excited for so who knows? Hmm. Hey, must you have a switch? 
No, I don't well have a Switch. You're not going to be able to play Mario. Well, maybe maybe you can buy a fancy new Switch because it looked pretty good, <laughs> but we'll get there in a second. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, which is a Nintendo Switch game, which I was already in bed. Hamish, you were awake for this at about midnight last night before the five o'clock Ubisoft forward. Apparently, Nintendo just like put the game up on all of its storefronts by accident. So it wasn't really a surprise. But anyway, it's it's the sequel to the first Mario and Rabbids game on Switch. And it's basically like Super Mario Galaxy. Ben, you're probably the, the target audience out of the three of us for this game. So take it away. To a small degree, except I haven't played the first one because it's like that uh, turn-based combat, which is great in like Paper Mario and those type of games, but I just couldn't be bothered playing it at the time. I, it kind of blends that from what I can tell with, you know, like Mario 64 style movement, combining them together. So yeah, you're right. It looks like, honestly, it looks like we've done Mushroom Kingdom. What did Mario in the real games do next? Well, he actually went on like a holiday to a tropical island, but they've skipped that and they've gone to Galaxy. Let's go bigger. Uh, yeah, it's probably, you know, the last game was pretty well received. It's probably pretty good. Very funny that Nintendo of all people leaked it uh, because Ubisoft pretty much, when we get to the end of talking about them, they announced almost nothing new. Their whole show was, here's some games that are already out, which what we're, we're updating. Here's some stuff you already knew about. Here's several games which were meant to be up by now, but they're not. So they're key content in RE3. And we've got a couple of new games. And this was basically half of the new content. So disappointing, but it will sell pretty well. It's it's a rare example of Nintendo licensing their characters. So they obviously have faith in Ubisoft to do well. Yeah, it's very much like a cutesy XCOM. It's, it, it, it's cutesy Mario, but it's like actually pretty difficult. Um, I really liked it, the first one, that is. Um, and I'm excited for the second one. It's going to it's gonna be a little bit more of the same. And I kind of hate rabbits with a fiery passion. I think they look creepy and they kind of scare me um, or unnerve me, perhaps is a better word. But anyway, uh, before we get into the last thing, I'm skipping. The last thing that we're going to talk about with Ubisoft, it was actually the last thing. Um, before Ubisoft Forward proper, they gave a release date for Watch Dogs Legion Bloodline, which is the content with Aiden Pierce, the protagonist from the original Watch Dogs. I think it's the 6th of July or something along that line. Um, I don't know if there's much to say about it. It seems really cool. I'm excited for it. I was excited for it when it was announced, but that was you know like a year and a half ago. So any thoughts before we continue mm. on? uh i'll play it i we talked about this last episode i haven't really played legion despite really liking it when i played like five hours at e3 years ago now uh but i and then i got home and i played Watch Dogs 2 which i'd skipped and i really liked that so yeah i'll play it it is interesting how when Watch Dogs 1 came out people kind of panned aiden pierce as this boring uh protagonist and now t with the you know time passing and Watch Dogs legion not having a protagonist you know, is in that new light of people thinking, actually, he wasn't that bad. There was something to work with. And let's see how his story kind of ended, because there's no doubt they ditched him because of the response he got. Yep. I mean, he was pretty white bread, I think. He was just that classic. Uh, when, when did it come out? Like 2010-ish? That classic old protagonist who just barely said anything and was just boring. And then oh. Watch Dogs 2, like, went the complete opposite direction, which was great and fun. Hmm um and then yeah legion obviously killed the idea so it's good to have him back i guess maybe they can do more with him this time but i'd like to see some story it was that thing of like like assassin's creed watchdogs was definitely like a tech demo of what they could try to do or wanted to do and like vastly different from the the trailer that kind of like set our expectations way higher than they probably should have been um but I guess it, like mm. looking at this list from Ubisoft, we're getting into the last thing that they announced. Like there was there was updates for 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 Honor and and the crew, but like there's and like you were saying, Ben, there's like the and Hamish, there's the the open world, fifty million things to do game in seven flavors right now, or there's Siege or or Siege space, but not in space, or Just Dance, or like that's it it's weird like we didn't see a splinter cell which i'm i i got so excited for i thought the thing at the end because i forgot about you know how the world works i thought it was going to be splinter cell we didn't see anything for from skull and bones we didn't see uh beyond good and evil 2 like it's it's i'm just gonna say it ubisoft's press comments really disappointed me thoughts agreed i think we've 
in pe- previous years talked about how Ubisoft was often a surprise because you would expect that either Xbox when Sony was still there or Nintendo was going to have the major announcements. And we often said something at Ubisoft was what we were most surprised with because either it hadn't leaked somehow, now everything they do pretty much leaks, or yeah, it was just something different. And it was when their games felt different, like the Watch Dogs trailer you're talking about, you know, we just come off so many Assassin's Creed games and then Watch Dogs felt totally different. And it looked like this is a, a great new IP that's going in a different direction. In the end, it followed a pretty similar formula to the Ubisoft map game, which is, it was kind of part of that group which started this whole problem. So to come out, only announced really two games. One of them was already leaked. And the other stuff was heavily reliant on stuff, which has been delayed, which is all very similar, as you just said. So I think we kind of saw this coming. We knew that there's that kind of lag from COVID. So uh, delaying games last year has had that roll on effect and probably should have expected it. But yeah, it's probably the weakest Ubisoft conference I've seen in the last 10 years of covering it. Yeah, I think it's probably tonally setting what E3 is going to be this year, right? Because as you said, COVID lag is a thing. Um, and yeah, it's just flat. Like, I'm not excited. Uh, I normally get pretty pumped about Ubisoft stuff um, for various reasons. They are the guys who used to try different things. Uh, and now, like you said, like even Nintendo's leaking their stuff. Now. So it's like, yeah. you know, I feel kind of sorry for them at the same time. But what are you going to do? That's like the world we live in now, right? Well, I don't think mm. it's going to get better from Ubisoft. Like they've they've come out and said that you know they're they're trying they're going to still do their AAA tent poles, but you know they're working on freemium, you know, like games as a service, free to play things. And like, I don't know, it's it's not encouraging. I love Ubisoft. I like a lot of their stuff, but like there's nothing really in the list of games that I was super pumped for. Like I'll play I'll play Mario and Rabbids. I will try Extraction. I will probably frustrate people like Hamish with my ineptitude. Um, and like Just Dance is Just Dance. Like every year I'm in. But like like nothing nothing exciting. Nothing nothing jaw-dropping. And, you know, like Eve Gilmo came on at the end and, you know, like blah, blah, blah. I'm talking, I'm talking. It's like, yeah, come on, Eve. Like, like let's get to like your, what's your one last thing? Let's go. What is it? Splinter Cell? It's, it's going to be Splinter it was not Splinter Cell. It was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora because for some reason we are still being told that Avatar is a thing we should care about. Do, you, do either of you actually hmm. care about Avatar? That's that's my leading question. We won't even get into the game just yet. Do you care about Avatar? Uh, not really. And where the hell did this come from? Like it was... Five years it ago? It didn't get leaked. <laughs> they have ten, to, ten they've had to go ago? to something... Yeah. I've had to go to something that we would never guess to get a non-leaked game, basically, because where I don't know. The biggest surprise for me is Avatar, the Twitter account, tweeted this. Why does Avatar have an active Twitter account? That's crazy. Like, these movies are never coming out, right? So I don't know what's going on. Because James Cameron's pumping money into it, I guess, and we're, we're encouraged mm. to think that it's good. I don't know. Like, it looked good. Hamish, did it not look great, like, visually? I mean, yeah, visually it looked great, but like a lot of Ubisoft games do. Right, they look pretty decent. Um, why do we need an Avatar game? Why? Like there's seventeen Avatar movies coming out. What's that? Is it Outriders? That's basically an Avatar game with like some Destiny type crap bolted on. It's like I just don't think that there's demand for it. But hey, yes, exactly. Like the doesn't... world suits it, the Avatar world suits a game. Like it could make a great game. There was like a, a standard movie cash in at the time, but the but there's potential there. But there's no demand, as you say, Hamish. I don't think there's anyone really wants that. They're banking on these movies will actually come out, maybe. Uh, and then people are going to be into it again. Like, they're trying to get ahead of the curve. But, yeah, I, it was a surprise because why did it happen? It's like it's a first-person game with bows and arrows and avatar weapons. And it looks like a, it looks sci-fi because it's on a different planet. But it's, you know, like, I'm imagining it's going to be, like, Far Cry with different things and probably 8 million things to do on a map and stuff. Like it's not, it's it's that same like variation of the theme. And if it was like mid, all my, all my monitors just turned off. You could see the drastic (laughs) lighting change. If, um, if this was like middle of the show announcement. Yeah. Okay, cool. Whatever. Like this was this, this is what you ended on. That's telling in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, that's yeah, why, I think right? it's like, that's I get... why it was disappointing. They didn't have that. Yeah, they didn't have that big end to finish on, which they normally have something which is, oh, like that's Eve's thing. 
one last thing. Here's something good, which is not coming out for a while, but we've got an idea here to show you, like a teaser or something. And that's what we always talk about. And they, yeah, I don't think they're going to have one for a couple of years. Well, next year will be the next Avatar game. <laughs> yeah, I think like, I get really big Horizon Zero Dawn kind of vibes from it. Maybe it's their answer to that. But um, no, nah, fix the division. Don't, don't make Avatar. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ben, we haven't done an expert segue in a while, but check out this expert segue. Um, the Devolver Max Pack. Matt, the, the Devolver Max Pack. That was great. Oh my God. <laughs> the was, Devolver that... Max Pass Plus. Uh, pre pre press conference presentation came out. And as I was watching that, I got the, uh, the, the pricing for Rocksmith Plus and putting up like 150 bucks a year at the same time that I'm watching on my screen, like Devolver monetizing everything gaming as like a joke and it's like oh that's that's like hitting pretty hard actually um do you want to talk did do you guys have a chance to check out the devolver press conference like on the whole mm, i watched it i struggled to pay attention because it was just too cringy for me like that joke of we're monetizing subscriptions so you can buy stuff again uh Kind of, I can see the joke there, but they went on too long and they did it too often. And for some reason, they were slamming hot dog sound like too much, which is kind of a throwback to us. Like 2014 E3, we're looking for a hot dog car because we're so hungry and that would have been great. But yeah, it didn't quite fit in. Uh, they eventually got to the games, but it was kind of like we need to have, we booked 45 minutes, guys. We've got eight minutes of content. How can we fill the rest? Well, let's really run this, bring this joke out. Like, yeah, I struggled to pay attention, to be honest. Aim. I skimmed through it because, I mean, no. Nah. <laughs> it was it was funny and then it wasn't funny and then it was funny and then it was not funny and then it was kind of funny and then it was not funny and then they like just kind of take like took it to the ground. Um, they did like a non fungible token joke, but they called it a non f wordable token and like ha 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 funny, but like that went on a little too long. They sold it like the one VHS tape for a thousand bucks, but they gave that to charity. So like there's it's like. For every good point, there's like an equally stupid point or bad point. So like, whatever. Um, I, there were three games that I thought were kind of neat that I want to talk about quickly. I don't know if you guys had any more, but Trek to Yomi is a, like a side-scrolling black and white kind of Kurosawa-inspired samurai game because we haven't had enough of those of late. But it looked pretty good. Um, so that comes out, I think, next year, maybe this year. I don't know if you guys want to talk about it. I can just like run these off really quickly and then you can talk, you can talk about it. Yeah, run them off. There was a mobile game called Devolver Tumble Time, which I'm not, I don't know if it's real or not. Like it was making fun of all of the mobile games where you, it's free to play and you do, you know, like a, not like a bejeweled match puzzle, but like the, I think Pokemon Cafe or whatever it's called is very similar. Like you have a play space and you have to like swipe the same things to, you know, physics puzzle them away. I think it's real, but I'm not sure if it was just them making fun of it or not. But if they are putting it out, and there's ads in this, like, it's, at what point is it not a joke anymore and Devolver's making money off people watching ads on their phone? Like, every, like they were saying that you shouldn't be doing, like, everything else about the presentation. Uh, and then mm -hmm. Phantom Abyss, which was actually good, looks like a cross between, like, Mirror's Edge with, like, first-person parkour and, like, a, a temple run, you know, like, temple run, one hit, you know, get as far as you can kind of thing. Like, sorry, that was it. That was me devolver digitaling everybody what do you guys want to talk about or not want to talk about uh i agree i think that was the best looking game phantom abyss it looks looked like what i what i want to play they did hit really hard like premium product this is def i think the woman said this is definitely not coming to a subscription which is okay that's your joke that you're making but does that mean none of these games would ever come to game pass because that's the only way i would ever play any of them so they've really kind of locked themselves into not jumping on there so I'm not going to ever buy any of these. The, the big joke was that the Devolver Max Pass Plus was a free subscription service that gave you the ability to get games via payment. So like every game that they announced, like, you know, it's like world premiere. Every game was announced with premium yeah. product. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think you got that. I don't know why I felt the need to explain the joke to you, but there you go. Yeah, no, I was going to us. They, <laughs> they just made it sound like we're we're never going to, you know, these games are not going to go to Game Pass ever. It's pretty much what they were saying. So, okay, I won't play them. Like, 
you're in the market of, of, of the type of game that I would stumble across in Game Pass and maybe try. And that's why it's, we've talked about that before. That's why it's a big success. You try different stuff. Uh, none of these games I would go out and buy. So I think they do it. I, I get what they're doing. They're doing that we need to kind of hit the opposite angle. Everyone's doing this. We're not going to get into that. I don't know that it works for them. I mean, Devolver's whole thing is like twenty to thirty dollars indie titles, right? That's like the that's the niche in the market they fill. So that that's perfect for Games mm. Pass. Like that's like the audience, as you said, yeah. for Games Pass. But like, I Phantom Abyss looks cool, but if you just get one go at like one of those temples and then that's it, that is infuriating. Like, I don't see that being like a long term thing. How hard did it look? super hard like it's kind of like the appeal of it but yeah like if, if it's just going to be like frustrating that's unfun um carrion which is one of like my favorite games of the last couple of years was a devolver game which was similarly priced but on game pass so like it's that thing of like the the tumble time mobile bit i guess like at what at what point does the joke end and like when does seriousness kick in i don't know um and they went as far as that uh demon throttle which is a switch game like it's not available digitally from what they're saying like you have to buy it as a cartridge which i don't i don't do that anymore no thank you i don't know devolver digital i guess you know what like honestly more people looked at stuff that we wrote about devolver than we did about ubisoft today so far i don't know if that's gonna Mm. last but like they're doing something different so you gotta applaud them for that yeah, I mean, I think they announced more new games. Yeah, they, they announced more new games than Ubisoft did, right? So as much as they padded it out for hours, it felt like hours with this terrible joke, uh, <laughs> they had content that Ubisoft didn't. So, And they were better than Gearbox. I don't know if you guys watched that, that followed it up, who had nothing. Because what they... So Gearbox had already announced, I think we're going to talk about it later, um, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. So they focused on that. And they Randy Pitchford did a walk around the Borderlands movie set for like 15 minutes but really awkwardly because he was like some guy just kind of filming in the corner and it was just like him like, oh, hey, I'm, this is E3 right here, this guy. And the director's being like, oh, okay, hi. I'm like, what is this? So Gearbox is definitely going to win worst presentation. Prime example of you do not need to do an E3 presentation if you don't have more than five minutes of content. Statement, don't need to talk about it. Why are they taking some photos of actors in borderlands the movie like completely backlit so it's like a it's like who's that pokemon and they're like here's a here's a set from the photo or photos god here's a photo from the Mm. set of borderland no it's not it's like someone backlit you can see like their outline that's not a photo of the borderland anyway moving on are we moving on summer games yeah that that was the whole show so (laughs) i mean the one thing i think we haven't talked about yet was that wizard with a gun (laughs) which looks okay to me. Oh, yeah. Um, that looks like interesting. I really like the art style, but it reminds me too much of Don't Starve. Do you remember that game from like years? And I hated that game. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm hopeful that it's not like that game, but it looks like that game. So if also, it was on Game Pass, would you play it? I would. I would try it if it was on Game Pass. I would not spend $30 on it. So <laughs> this is a three beer podcast for me, and I regret nothing. Um, <laughs> Do we want to talk about Summer Game Fest then? Because Ben sort of segued and then Hamish pulled us back. Unprofessional Hamish. You should, you know, come on, get with, no, I'm just kidding. Um, let's talk about that one first. Tina, Tina, Tina Turner's Wonderlands. Tiny yeah. Tina's Wonderlands. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Tina Turner's Wonderlands would be a better game, to be honest. Um, it, it's like Borderlands with a Dungeons and Dragons. Tina has an imagination. Go play a game twist. I have zero interest in Borderlands to begin with. So that is, is continuing mm. on. That's extending for me into Wonderlands take it away you guys unless you're the same of the same opinion pretty similar they seem to hit this pretty hard with the andy sandberg three other celebrities who i've already forgotten like that was their main pitch of like we've got celebrities but they didn't really show them so yeah i don't really they, they made a big deal of if you haven't played borderlands you can start here we kind of get it it's hard to go into borderlands 3 having not played the others you're not really into the world you could start here instead that seems to be their sales pitch so i'm not really that interested but i I can see what they're trying to do. I don't like the gameplay or the humor, to be honest. Borderlands 3 was hot garbage, in my opinion. So it feels like this Mm. is kind of like trying to pull people back and to be invested in the IP again, because I think Borderlands 2 had that Tiny Tina DLC as well, and it was like a rampaging success. So I think maybe they're trying to like 
be like, oh shit, we need to patch the boat. <laughs> yeah. And everyone loves Ashley Birch and you should, cause she's great, but like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's still the same game, but like a different, it's a new game, but a different game at the same game at the same time. Hurrah. Sorry, did I cut you off, Aim? I didn't have um, anything else good to say. I was just going to rag on Borderlands 3 some more because that game is so boring. I'm three <laughs> beers deep, so I, I'm loose now. Um, two, two, actually, I'm two beers deep. I'm into, you know what I mean? Uh, something that was actually very much up my alley is Evil Dead, the game, which was announced last year. It's, it's basically Dead by Daylight, but Evil Dead, which is hilarious because Ash Williams is in Dead by Daylight, but that's beside the point. Uh, it's a like a four uh, player co-op game where there's going to be someone controlling uh, a Kandarian demon. So, like it's literally just Dead by Daylight, um, and it's just like fully leveraging the Dead by Nope, the Evil Dead franchise. So you can play as like Ash, his sister. You can play as the King guy from Army of Darkness. You can play as uh, Pablo and Kelly from Ash versus Evil Dead, which is on stand. If you haven't seen it, you should because it's great um did you guys check out this game not at all so i'll take your word for it (laughs) it's so good aim yeah i watched the stuff for it uh i mean i think it looks good um like but the performance that the guy who voices ash like or plays ash gave in that trailer was so phoned in um which was terrible but (laughs) i just like how do you feel this space that like the only game that's successful in this space is dead by daylight like you look at Friday the 13th. Um, Done. I mean, you could even say Evolve. Yep. Games like that, like, have tried to do this asynchronous multiplayer and just failed. And Dead by Daylight has succeeded and is now doing a zombie thing with Resident Evil stuff where there's going to be zombies, which is obviously what Evil Dead's like thing is as well because you see, like, the they're fighting the zombies. Is it just the, the player? I assume that the other player just controls the demon and not the zombies themselves. Um, yeah, like, the Deadites are just going to be around... So it's probably like a little bit less sneaky than Dead by Daylight. Mm. Um, but then like Ash is in Dead by Daylight. And like you were saying, Dead by Daylight is like the Fortnite of this of this genre. <laughs> they're, they're do- well, they're like they're doing a Resident Evil crossover soon. Like, yeah. So I, I have Dead by Daylight, which I already love. If you guys haven't played it, by all means, jump on with me because it's so good. And I actually know what I'm doing and I can show you how things work. And it's, ah, it's good. Um, but like. I can play as Ash already and I can play as Leon and Claire and the nemesis and Freddy Krueger and Jason and Michael Myers. And like the thing that I like about evil dead is it looks really good, but at the end of the day, it's like you play as the demon or like these six evil dead characters. And I don't know if there's a lot of maps or anything yet. So like it, I'm excited for it, but I'm also like, Oh, I think it's going to go like the old phonic predator hunting grounds. That's what I was thinking of or Friday the 13th or blah, 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 blah route, sadly. Yeah, I think like, um, as long as it's like, so to me, the problem with Dead by Daylight is fixing generators is boring as fuck. Like (laughs) sitting there, hitting a quick time event. I hate quick time events in games anyway. And that's like the entire gameplay loop of Dead by Daylight. So if Evil Dead does that better, I'm absolutely here for it. And like you said, it looks so much better. Like Dead by Daylight is dated. It's like a 2016 game i want to say something like that um and it's very very dated by now in 2021 so i think there is potentially a market for a more interesting because they were using guns and stuff too which you you can't fight back really in dead by daylight at all like you throw pallets and stuff or jump through windows but so i think there's a potential niche there and you're seeing a lot of like indie games come through at the moment on steam so maybe you guys don't see them as much where it's like this uh, four players and a monster phasmophobia is kind of an example of that but there's there's ones that's more like you must break this thing and then do this other thing and then you kill the demon and then you win and so if that's the direction they're going in like a triple a title i think that'll be good but if they're trying to take on dead by daylight you've got no chance like and it's on game pass now too so like so you have no excuse not to play with me then. There you go. Um, something that's not on the list, but I think Hamish was kind of talking about it before and, and was at Summer Game Fest is Warner Brothers and Turtle Rocks Back for Blood, which is obviously a Left for Dead clone because it's the Left for Dead people making a game because they don't have the rights to call it Left for Dead. Um, it's it's Left for Dead some more. Are you excited or was that, you know, like 10 years ago? Like, what are you both feeling about that at this point? 
mm, 10 years ago to me. But yeah, and I got into Left 4 Dead 1 initially and then 2 had that, was it 2 that had the whole thing of like it's censored and it's dodgy in Australia and it's, everything's green. And so it was more just funny to me. I didn't actually ever get into playing it and I never got back to it when it got normal. So uh, it was, yeah, I never really followed it beyond that. Don't know if you guys did. I played a lot of it. Uh, the original Left 4 Dead, uh, especially, actually, and a fair bit of Left 4 Dead 2, even though it was, the like you said, the crappy kind of censored version. So there's definitely some, like, nostalgia. But I also reinstalled Left 4 Dead 2, I want to say it was last year, when they released that update with, like, 21 new maps and stuff like that, and I just didn't play it because it just it's so dated. Again, and we're coming back to that thing where it's, it's a dated format, right? Like, you stand there with guns that just, just make noises and kill zombies. Like, they don't feel good to use, like, in Siege or even Call of Duty. Like, guns in that feel great. These are just, like sticks of death essentially you just sit there and just like blap away um uh, what's it called world war z did that very well but that's because there was like a million zombies in a horde so i think i'm worried about back for blood with that card system that they have oh, yeah. it's like it's like don't do that that's lame you know mm, we'll and, see like so i and i'm like i know i shout out to your discord server hi guys say hi if you want hamish call out my name <laughs> you do too, you want like you need a group like that though to play games. Like I like Ben, I love you so much. But you know, like the two of us struggle to play games together as it is. And then like trying to rope Hamish in or something, or roping in three, two other people. Like I, I don't got time for that. It's, it's it's I'd love to, but I don't have time for that. Yeah, I mean, it's like not you said. <laughs> We just have this, like, I have a couple of servers on Discord that I use. Being a PC gamer is better for that because it's easier than consoles, right? So we're playing a game at the moment. <laughs> it's terrible. It came out in 2018. Space Hulk Deathwing, which is basically left for dead again, but it's set in the 40K universe. And so that works because it's terrible by yourself or like with one or two people. But if you get four people, then you're just standing there like blapping Tyranids for like, you know, 45 minutes. It's kind of fun. And I think that that's what Back for Blood's shooting for as well. So you just need blapping. like a, yeah, blapping. That's that's a young kid <laughs> word, blapping. Uh, I don't know if you can blap things in Jurassic World Evolution Two, uh, but that was a game that was announced. I'm I loved the first one. I don't know if you played it, the park building kind of sim by Frontier Developments, who did Zoo Tycoon and all the most of the tycoons, if not all of the tycoons. Um, I don't have much to say about it. I just thought it was neat that it had an announcement and it's like one of those games that we didn't know about a week ago and I'm actually excited for it. It's done that thing where I haven't played the first one, but it is in Game Pass. So having watched the trailer for the sequel, which I know is now coming, I'm going to go play the first one. I don't know if that's, was it, that might've been extension or not, but that's a very E3 thing for me. Like you see something which is coming up and I realize, oh, I didn't play the last one. I should go back and play it. So it's worked on that front. And it's got Jeff Goldblum, right? Who doesn't love that guy? And um, Bryce Dallas yeah. Howard. Yeah, less, and who doesn't less, love that chick? <laughs> less of a draw card, <laughs> admittedly, than Jeff Goldblum. But, like, you know, it's no fault of her own. He's Jeff Goldblum. How do you compete with that, right? Exactly. Um, this is not my thing at all, but probably the biggest thing I'd say of Summer Game Fest was the release date of Elden Ring, which I forgot to write down in my notes, but Hamish, maybe from the look on your January face. January sometime, I have it open. Sweet. <laughs> January 21. 2022. 2022, not this year, no. That's part. Well, we've heard nothing about this game basically since it was announced ages ago and now it's like it's not like a long drawn out thing and it's not like oh you're gonna get this in august but then it'll get delayed five times to jail. like I'm, I'm cool with at least that aspect of the announcement that's all i know about elden ring mm. i know nothing about it's like dark souls but with george R. R. martin and and pots with hands yeah well, i think hamish. this is hamish all over it yeah we, this is not us steve <laughs> the floor yeah, I mean is yours it's super exciting. I think it's a very from software thing to do to just not announce like a release date until like super close because you, I think that was the case with Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 2 and uh, the Sekiro and all those other ones, which I haven't actually played. Um, I'm excited. Like I love that super challenging but super fair style of like from software games. I love George R. R. Martin's books, not so much his TV shows. Um, 
But yeah, I think there was a lot of toxicity actually that's been floating around this game online because play like people are excited for it. I shouldn't say players yet because the game's not out, but they were like, oh, it's disrespectful. How could they not give us a release date? How could they not drop a trailer? Which is ridiculous. Like it's the most entitled bullshit I've ever seen, but it's classic like that kind of gamer, right? But now we have it. We have this release date. The trailer looked fucking amazing to be like perfectly blunt. Like it looked so good and I'm so excited to get absolutely spanked by this game in January of next year. So I'm not, but like, I, <laughs> I can appreciate that. It looks really cool. I'm imagining that, you know, well, like, I don't know. It, it seems like there'll be more of a narrative thing to it potentially because of George R.R. R. Martin, or maybe not. Like maybe he's written all this lore in the background that from is kind of like thinking it's referencing really well, but like, you're going to have to be a, a super sleuth to figure out what's actually going on. But like anyone who likes a from software game, I understand why they like, this i get it and it looks pretty i'm not gonna play it ben are you gonna give it a, a shot probably not i'm gonna i'm Absolutely gonna go not. and say no <laughs> no chance try it try it for me experience <laughs> um, the goes, when it comes to game pass i'll try it so never hey it might <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if sony does a game pass it might end up there right so <laughs> yeah Bloodborne was like one of my favorite reviews I've ever written, but like, God, like, oh God, let's not get into that. Um, anything else from Summer Game Fest that I didn't put in our little notes here that you guys wanted to talk about? I don't think there's much else to be fair, but that was it. something that might happen, which is still a rumor, is that Back for Blood may be a Game Pass day one launch thing. Good sentence ending, Stephen. Mm. But we don't know yet. That so would be good. We'll know tomorrow. Yeah the 14th of june probably during microsoft's press conference but if not there's a back for blood pvp thing that follows a couple hours later we're almost done sorry guys i know this is running a little bit long um the last thing i want to talk about was ea's e3 contributions which was in the form of one game which was battlefield 2042 not 2142 i feel like ben mm. you're probably the, the guy to give us the overview which I well, when this leaked, when it leaked, I thought we've already had that game, and then I quick Google. You're right; it was 2140. So we had. So this is how much they're blurring together for me. Like, oh, okay, yeah. So we have we haven't had modern warfare. We've had 42. We've had them 43 at some point. Then we went to super future. Now we've got modernish. The biggest surprise here is, be alarm, guys. 2042 is 21 years away. Like this is near future. It sounds like it's ages away, but apparently not. Uh, but yeah, so no campaign, which is it's got some people rolled up, but basically the original Battlefield games never had a campaign. So not really a surprise. What they had instead was if you don't have any friends to play with or you don't want to play online, you can play the proper multiplayer against bots, which is very early 2000s because your broadband might have been used. Your mum was on the phone, so you can't play online. <laughs> That's why that existed. I don't think anyone will use that, but it's good to be back. Uh, I, I never thought the Battlefield campaigns were any good until one and five, which were we need to compete with COD. We're going to do like based on World War One, based on World War Two, independent stories, not one coherent campaign. And that does not work in a futuristic fictional setting because they've got no stories to go off. So yeah, I'm not surprised I got rid of that. The big news is probably current gen is going up to 128 players. So if you thought you were lost, Steve, on last gen with 64, PC and console are now aligning with 128. Last gen, I think, is still 64. Yeah. Um, and so it's 10 bucks cheaper. Basically, it's going up by $10 on current gen consoles, which is really weird because I tried to look at it today just to see what it actually costs because I think we only got US prices. And on Xbox, at least, you can buy Xbox One only. That's 100 bucks, Or you can buy the fancy like gold edition, which is like 150 There's no Series X version to pre-order that I could find, which is That's right. unusual. Yeah, well, anyhow, that's pretty much it. I'm going to play it. It looks good. I got back into Battlefield with one and five. So then going to that modern setting again, I'm, I'm into it. The price going up, you know, at least it's not 125, like 110 is acceptable to a degree. 10% off with Game Pass anyway. Uh, yeah. Are you, you going to play? I am, but I want to hear what Hamish wants. To, I feel like I've talked too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've talked too much. I spent like 10 minutes talking about both extraction and Elden Ring. So, um, shut up, Hamish. You're the guest. Talk <laughs> some more. So, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'll play 2042. 
um, even if it's not on Games Pass. Um, I will have a crack. I played one last. I skipped five. I tried the Battle Royale mode, and that was awful. Awful. Firestorm? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's like they haven't been able to compete with COD for like yeah. several like generations now. One so are you a Warzone guy or like a Black I was. Ops I played the War shit guy. out of Modern Warfare um, a couple hundred hours into that, but I haven't touched Cold War because it just doesn't really appeal to me that much. Warzone had too many hackers, but that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> um, 2042 though. I mean, I'm so uninspired by this game. Uh, it's a setting that we've seen fail multiple times for COD, like Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare, all those other ones just didn't work because it's... I think there's something really primal about like old wars that like mm. gamers want to connect to and the future ones, it just, no one cares. Like it's like way less interesting than ones that are grounded now or in the past. And the trailer was really uninspiring. Like they did that stupid, like jump out of the jet and shoot the dude with the, and got, get back in. Like that's just pandering. And I think that that's them trying to make up for Battlefield 5, which uh, was a flop. And there's no other way to say that. So I'm uninspired, but I'll play it anyway, which I think is what a lot of people will probably do. So I think I'm pretty much exactly that opinion. It like the trailer looked cool. And like, it's all about like battlefield moments and they didn't go as far as being like revolution. But like, (laughs) I, I do dig those kind of things. I think there's a risk of, it probably happened more in like four and one for me. Like those battlefield moments were happening more often where like five was kind of more like slow and, and kind of tactical. So it wasn't as like momentous, but it was still enjoyable. So like, I don't know, like if, if, if that's kind of where things are shifting to like a faster time to kill and stuff, like I'm kind of, I'm kind of there for it, I guess. I don't know. I like battlefield. Like, like I was saying, talking to you the other week, Ben, like I like, I like a COD game because, you know, I know how to play a COD game and I like a Battlefield game because I think I know how to play a Battlefield game. I don't know if that's going to change with this one or not, but it's one of those ones where I will only basically play with friends. So, and that goes to the problem of playing with friends, but yeah. whatever. Um, like, it should be fun. Hmm. Yeah. And like Battlefield 4 was actually the first game we ever played together, Steve. So that's like a, that's a big deal for me. <laughs> yeah. But like Battlefield 1 had was probably the most batshit I think the series got, like with like planes spinning around on flagpoles and like the blimp just like going insane. Um, but I think they kind of jumped the shark there as well. So maybe they do need to turn it back down. But then you've got games like on PC, at least you've got games like Hell Let Loose, which I think might be coming to PS4 at some point, but um, and PS5 now. But there's games that do what Battlefield wants to do and they do it better. And there's games that do what COD wants to do and that's COD, right? So where does Battlefield fit in there now for Battlefield 2042? Like, how are they going to be approachable but distinct enough, I think, to be an interesting proposition? But like you said, I'll play it with friends and I'll I'll probably like it. So, Would you rather Battlefield 2042 or Titanfall 3? Titanfall 3. (laughs) Ben? Every day. For the single player campaign. Yeah. I'll, well, I mean, that throws back to they sabotaged Titanfall 2 with Battlefield 1, like launching them a week apart. The review events were at the same thing and like they just didn't care about Titanfall. Like they were like, here's Battlefield, get that done first and do Titanfall if you feel like it. Like weird. Anyway, disappointing because Titanfall 2 is great. Uh, but I, I like Battlefield 1, as you say, for that reason of it slowed everything down so much and it came out in that time when we just had Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare. So COD was going like, Keep, kept stepping up we need to go quicker we need to go like combat loop constantly and battlefield went the other way it went let's go real slow let's go world war one with this with guns that are going to jam after like firing twice and it was just so much slower from what we'd had at the time that it, that's why i got into it again like it was a slower pace you take your time there's a lot more going on on the overall battlefield and here it seems like they've accidentally gone back to and it's hectic again there's this futuristic there's jets exploding and what they like, probably noticed like what is our thing And it's just more players on the field. Let's do more on the battlefield. Like, well, to a degree, that is their thing, Hamish. I think that's what they're trying to look for. But as you say, other people can do that now. It's not, you know, the early 2000s when they're the only one doing that successfully. So, yeah, I'm not not sure. It depends what COD does. I do think they have an advantage of COD hasn't been announced. Something has gone terribly wrong with this year's COD to the degree it hasn't been announced. Apparently, every Activision studio is working on it to try to get it done. It's probably not going to be great. 
But if it is World War II again, I'm more inclined probably to go back there because it's it's different. As much as we got saturated with that at a point, we kind of went back around full circle that I'm done with future modern. So yeah, I kind of liked going back to the slower pace. Mm. And I think that the best Battlefield game to come out since, in my opinion, probably three is Modern Warfare. Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare did that Battlefield thing where you have like the capture points and the tanks and the, mm. like, that did it way better. Like Modern Warfare was a great game and it killed Battlefield just all, every in every single way. And it helped that it came out against Battlefield 5. But as you said, the next COD game, I think it's Sledgehammer again and they're doing World War II, as you said. But like that's what everyone Apparently. was assuming. It sounds like, it sounds like it's, it's going very poorly. That's a problem. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a rumor that they have. So they re-released Modern Warfare 2's campaign a few years ago, but there's a rumor that they're just remastering the multiplayer so they have something to put out this year as like a fail-safe backup, which mm. is not a promising situation from a publisher which has always managed to get its cut out because they know they're going to make hundreds of millions out of this. So it's just a formality. Something has gone terribly wrong. So die step up like this is your moment. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what went wrong from uh, Jason Schreier in a couple months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. And I know talking like a, a Titanfall 3 is like good luck, buddy. But like if you want like a futuristic kind of shooter, like Apex Legends kind of is filling that void, especially at EA. So like I just, I a futuristic setting is kind of strange. Like even a modern day setting isn't a futuristic setting Anyway, I don't, I don't, I think we've beaten this to a thing and I've t- beat, we've beaten this to a thing. There we go. Uh, and I've taken up too much of your time. Do you want to finish off? I don't know if like there even is one, to be honest. Do you want to pick your, your best of show so far from what we've talked about? There isn't one. There's, there's <laughs> nothing I'm excited for so far that we didn't really know about. Like, you know, Far Cry 6 looks good. I'm interested in playing, but like of stuff that we learned about today, nothing or the last few days. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing big and exciting really been announced so far, but it's also day one of the conference, right? Like we're doing this like basically smack bang at the start. So maybe there'll be something mm. coming out in the next couple of days. But I mean, yeah, I'm excited for Elden Ring. I think I'm excited for Extraction as well. But like we knew about those. Those aren't new things really. So, well, I think uh, look, we, we've said this, we've said it today. Ben and I have said it before. Like it's, it's, it's a COVID world and things have been impacted obviously like we only have really out of the big hitters bethesda xbox and nintendo to go so like i'm sure they'll have some good stuff but i don't think there's going to be anything like jaw droppingly amazing um i hope so but like i I think it's almost better to set your expectations realistically and and maybe be surprised what a great note to end on (laughs) yeah what a downer Hamish, how do we find you on the internet? Uh, well, I write for this uh, small indie website you might not have heard of quite often. It's called Survivor. Um, you, can find, oh. yeah. <laughs> you can find all my garbage thoughts over there uh, or you can find me at Hamish SL on Twitter. They're very not garbage thoughts, <laughs> I would just like to point out. Ben, how do we find you? Uh, I am Ben underscore Salter on Twitter and that's it for me. That's where all my thoughts are. <laughs> It's, has Port played this weekend? No. Yes. No. Yeah, but I restrain myself. Anyway, where do you find you on Twitter? On, on the <laughs> internet, I mean. S right A U. If you want my address, I won't give it to you unless you're Xbox, because I want one of those blankets. They look really comfortable, and I don't have one yet. But that's beside the point. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, theoretically. Ben and I with Oz Gamers to do a breakdown of Microsoft and Bethesda. Hamish, thank you for joining us, though. It's been my pleasure. And we'll see you tomorrow and we'll see you in a couple days for uh, Nintendo. Okay, bye.